They say size matters, but also good things come in small packages. This model is in Mamut colours and it's the Liebherr LTM 1500. And it's in the small scale of 1 to 87. It's from a maker we've not seen before on cranes etc. And that's Kran Lab. It's a licensed product and the holograms are on the box. And there's also a Mammut store model number, which is 410107. The outer sleeve has Mammut branding and inside is a nice quality box. So let's open it up and see what's inside. First up, there is a Mammut collector card. It's uniquely numbered and it says that 750 models have been made. Next is a simple instruction sheet and it describes the main assembly associated with the model. The packaging inside is foam rubber and when we remove the top sheet we see the model protected by soft paper. Let's carefully take the model out and at this point we see the size of this 1 to 87 scale model crane. First thing we will do, and it's not mentioned in the instructions, is to fit the door mirrors, and they are slightly loose fitting. Next we need to take some rope off of the winch drum, and a key is supplied for this purpose. The winch drum relies on friction as a brake, and it's effective. There is only a single line hook provided with the model, which is a pity, but you can wedge it in at the front as a transport mode. If you're not using the winch, you can clip on an exhaust detail. And then we have the crane ready for the road. We start by looking underneath and there's some decent detailing. The drive shafts and driven axles are modelled. And there's enough detail in this scale to be interesting. The Kran Lab name is embossed underneath. And the tyres have a good tread pattern. The detailing on the carrier cab includes beacon lights and windscreen wipers. And there's a realistic number plate, nice chevron graphics and the headlights are indicated. There's a spooling drum on the side of the boom. And there are very small graphics on the boom head. Behind the cab there's a Mammut fleet number. And there's more nice detailing along the boom. The wheels are good with different central hub sizes. The printing of the graphics is very sharp. And the crane body looks very good with its ladder and other cast in details. The crane cab is really good with seals indicated on the windows. There are textured walkways and metal handrails. At the back of the carrier the decoration is also very good. There are sharp graphics and nicely highlighted lights. On the other side of the crane is an etched grille. And up on top the rope on the winch drum is nicely wound. There's also black highlighting on top of the boom. Nice to see in this scale is that all of the sheaves are separate parts. The outrigger beams are metal with excellent chevrons. And the small pistons have visible screw threads. Metal spreader plates are also included. With the boom up we can see the detail on the carrier deck. And there's an etched grill, a nice exhaust and textured surfaces. And the overall appearance is really nice. The rear winch frame has two working winches modelled. And the counterweight has nice graphics, usable lifting lugs. And the Liebherr name is embossed on the winch frame. The boom sections are very nicely modelled. There's a realistic 4 section 50 metre boom. It has accurate colours and only the white locking pin would have been better in grey. The model also has a Y guy arrangement. And this is another part accurately modelled in metal. Even the very thin guy rods are metal. We start back underneath and all of the wheels spin freely. But because of the scale there's no working steering. However it rolls very well with all wheels grounded. The counterweight block on the model is very flexible and we'll start by undoing the screws at the bottom. And that does allow all of the plates to be separated. And we can also pull off the winch frame. You can also remove the pistons from the winch frame by undoing tiny screws. 
The model also has extra parts, including four more counterweight blocks. There are spreader plates and the wire guy arrangement. So what you can also do is to make use of some 1 to 87 trucks. And these are available in Mammut colors to act as a support fleet. The crane has arrived on site so let's set it up and the first thing we'll do is to pull out the two stage outrigger beams. And then we can lower the pads by unscrewing in the usual way, although they are very stiff. Once they're down you can use the supplied spreader plates. And the system works very well because the model can be supported wheels free. Next just like the real crane the cab swings round into position. And then we can release the hook from the transport position. And then we can use our fingers to get our boom up. The boom rams are excellent because even in this scale they have tiny grub screws which are used to tighten the extension you want. And an extremely thin allen key is provided for the purpose. All of the sections of the boom can be telescoped out. And they all have a variety of locking positions. The locks work in the usual way by depressing in the clip and then you can telescope the section and the clip pops out at the next hole. Let's now reassemble the counterweight into an accurate pose and to do that we'll just stick the base plate back onto the end of the pistons and screw it into place. By doing this you can see that you could pose the counterweight with different configurations and if you want to display an accurate erection sequence you can remove the winch frame. This is fixed to the top of the pistons by tiny screws. So now if you want you could pose the crane in self ballasting mode. And if we bring one of our trucks onto the scene, you can replicate the crane assembly. To fit the counterweight onto the crane it hooks on at the back and you secure it with a couple of screws. Another feature of the model is that the crane cab tilts. Let's do a dim check to see the size of the model. And end to end it's about 9 inches or 23 centimeters. And with the boom fully extended, it's about 22 inches or 56 centimeters. Another very nice use of the model in this scale is to pose it erecting a tower crane. This model is based on a 50 meter boom, but in real life you'd probably want to use an 84 meter boom. But still, if you have a 1 to 87 tower crane model, this is probably the best 1 to 87 mobile crane to use. Another option if you want to simulate heavy lifting is to fit the Y guy attachment. We'll fix this up in the air, which of course is nothing like how it would be fitted to the real crane, but that's only because you can't get hands this big in real life. The Y guy arrangement is precision engineered and you fix it using screws. And once it's fixed to the boom, you screw in the two hydraulic rams. These push up the Y guy frame to be at right angles to the boom. Next job is to attach the guy rods, and these are screwed in at the boom foot. Of course, all these parts are in 1 to 87 scale, so doing this is a challenge to the holders of salami sized fingers. Another great aspect of this model is that the winches for the Y guy are working, and an Allen key is supplied so that you can operate them. The winch drums have good friction, so they can tension up the whole system. But before you do that, you need to screw in the guy ropes to the top of the boom head. Both arms of the Y guy spread realistically, and the whole arrangement looks great. Music 
Just a couple more things to look at, and that's the extra weights we can put onto the counterweight stack. And it's also possible to have the crane in transport mode with the Y guy arrangement fitted. And even here, the guy rods can be folded nicely into position. <laughs> Crown Lab has set a new standard for a mobile crane model in 1 to 87 scale. It has a high metal content and a fine combination of detailing and functionality. And this version of it looks great in mammoth colours. So, if you're looking for a heavy crane in a very small scale, this one is excellent. <laughs> <laughs>